Thank you, Richard. Thank you all for coming. Thank you to Richard and Justin and Daryl and Nick and everyone else that's been a part of putting this together. Thank you so much for coming to beautiful Concord, New Hampshire. I am speaking here under the statue Daniel Webster, who I was just told apparently uh, beat up the devil. And uh, I promise you, as a solemn promise to the American people that when elected, I too will go and beat up the devil. That has pulled well. I pulled it very briefly just now. It focus group really well. We are against the devil. Uh, folks, I'm gonna keep my, my speech pretty short and sweet. I say that every time and that never happens. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet and then I'm gonna do some q and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Folks, who here is ready to take back their power? Clapping or, or, or your hand up is, is acceptable. Who here is ready to stop the Republican Democrat crony gravy train that we have right now, where we are robbed of trillions of dollars to give to billionaires who bought and paid for people to be in office? Good. Who here is ready to create a freer and happier and safer society by taking our power back? Folks, that's what Joe and I want. That's why we're voting. That's why we're running for president, vice president, because we have seen what the Republicans and Democrats have done with their, one, with their uh, exclusive control of every lever of power of, gov of government in this country for over 160 years. And we see what they've done with that control. They've used it to rob you of your power. They've used it to rob you of your wealth. They've used it to rob you of your money. And what do they do with that money? They use it to enrich themselves and those well-heeled, politically connected billionaire cronies who have bought and paid for them to be in office. And that has led to the harmful and abusive and inequitable, inequitable outcomes that we have come to know and love from the Republicans. That's why Joe and I are running, because we recognize that we're never going to fix this with the people who created the problem. We're never going to fix this with the policies, with doubling down on the policies that created these problems and made them worse. The only way we're going to be able to fix this is by completely dismantling every single tyrannical, oppressive, and infringing policy that the Republicrats have put forward. That's why Joe and I are running, and that is why we vote Libertarian. Folks, who here is sick and tired of watching their loved ones, their family members, maybe even themselves, swear to protect and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic, only to be sent overseas by those domestic enemies to fight and kill and potentially die for the benefit of military contractors, and central bankers, and foreign dictators, and criminal cartels, and if they're fortunate enough not to be brought home in a flag-draped casket, they come home with many different health problems, PTSD, traumatic brain injuries, chronic pain issues, and all sorts of other issues, and are subjected to the worst form of health care in this country, the Veterans Administration. I know I'm sick of that. Who here is sick and tired of watching people's lives being destroyed, entire communities being destroyed, people being criminalized because of a failed and racist war on drugs. Who here is sick and tired of watching people being brutalized in plain view by an increasingly militarized and increasingly unaccountable police state? And then having that same police state tell you what your guns you should be allowed to have to protect yourselves and your loved ones and your communities while they go and buy whatever military grade weaponry they want and stick you with the bill for it. Who here is sick and tired of watching entire industries flee, not just here in New Hampshire, but around the entire country, or either going overseas or just going out of business because of disastrous economic policies from Republicans and Democrats? Who here is sick and tired of watching the cost of living spiral out of control from health care to public to, to housing to higher education and everything in between because of terrible policies from the Republicans and Democrats including the Federal Reserve and the IRS who here is sick and tired of being told whether or not you're essential whether or not you should be allowed to go outside whether or not you should be allowed to get cancer screenings at your hospital whether or not you should be allowed to get care uh, uh, outside of, of COVID, whether or not you should be allowed to operate in your business, whether or not you should be allowed to work to feed your loved ones, whether or not you should be allowed to resume a, your, your lifestyle and be told to stay at home and make no money and they give you $1,200, well they turn around and give trillions of dollars to billionaire cronies to make sure their bottom line isn't affected even remotely and stick you with the bill with interest. Folks, Joe and I 
are as sick and tired of these things as you are. And that's why we're running. Because we recognize that the reason these things are happening, the reason that we are having bad outcomes from these terrible policies is because it is a violation of our rights and our property and our lives. And we recognize that we will do far better when the power is put back in your hands where it always belonged, when the money is put back in your hands where it all belonged, when your freedom is restored and your lives are able to thrive. That's why we are running and that is why Nick is running and Richard is running and Justin and Daryl and Andrew and everyone else up and down the ballot in all 50 states are running as libertarians because we are here to take the power back and to dismantle the Republican machine. That's why we're running. Folks, let's be very clear. These bad policies that we're facing, they're not unintended consequences that no one could have possibly foreseen. We've been saying for 49 years that this is what would happen. We've been warning all along that these things are what would happen. They knew that this would happen and they wanted it to happen because they want you to be anxious. They want you to be desperate. They want you to be scared. They want you not to know where your next paycheck is coming from or if your retirement is secure. They want you not to know if you're gonna be able to pay your rent or your mortgage. They want you to be resentful. They want us at each other's throats. They want you to be hopeless. And they want you to have a broken spirit. Because if they can make you hopeless and if they can break your spirit, then it's that much easier to convince you that everything will be fine if you just give them the rest of the power, if you just let them take total control, if you just give them the rest of the money that they let you keep, then you'll be safe, then you'll be healthy, then you won't have a single thing to worry about, then everything will be okay. But well, folks, we know that the last people that we can trust to get us out of the problems that they've created are the very people that have created these problems. So before I talk about my amazing running mate, let me talk for a moment about the people that put us in this mess. Let's talk for a minute about the Republicans. Let's talk about Joe Biden. Oh, you've heard of him. Joe Biden, <laughs> name a policy you hate. The war on drugs, the endless wars overseas, Obamacare, gun control, you name it. If it's a bad policy, Joe Biden has either helped write it, or has sponsored it, or has voted for it, or has overseen its enforcement during his eight years in the White House. Joe Biden is the architect, one of the architects of every bad policy to come out of DC for the nearly 50 years he has been there, when he is not in his spare time sniffing children, making women try to kiss him, and increasingly forgetting where he is or who he is. Joe Biden is the architect. And how fitting that one of the architects of the militarized police state that we have would pick as his running mate one of its most brutal enforcers. Let's talk for a moment about Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris, who has the, the distinction of putting more people in prison for victimless crimes at the state level than any other person alive. Kamala Harris, that at least twice that we know of, intentionally and knowingly withheld exculpatory evidence in a capital murder case. She knew or had every reason to believe that the people she was prosecuting and trying to have executed did not commit the crime. And her response to that was to withhold the evidence to try to get them executed. Why? So that her conviction rate wouldn't go down. That is who the Democrats have asked you to throw your vote away for. Now let's talk about the other wing of that plane crash. Let's talk about the Republicans. Let's talk for a moment about Donald Trump a lifelong crony who has used the power of government to enrich himself at the direct expense of everyone around him. Whether we're talking about him using eminent domain to force widows to sell their properties to him to build his next field casino project, or when the, that casino project did fail, using the bankruptcy courts to unload all of his debt on his poor investors so he could walk away with as much of the profit as possible. Donald Trump, who said that he would drain the swamp only to become the king of the swamp creatures. Donald Trump who said that he would cut government spending and instead has spent more money in one term than any president before him. He said that he would eliminate the national debt. He didn't just say he'd reduce it, he said he'd eliminate the national debt and instead he has run more debt in one term than, every other, than, than any other president before him. 
just one term. He said that he would end the wars overseas and bring the troops home. And instead, he has sent more, there are 15,000 more troops overseas now than there were when he came into office. He said that he would protect our right to keep and bear arms. And instead, he, with the help and assistance of the NRA, side note there, has passed more gun control regulations and executive orders and encouraged more uh, red flag laws at the state level than any than the last five presidents before him. Donald Trump has broken every promise he made to those who wanted a smaller or more limited government. And I'd be remiss not to bring up his running mate as well. I will talk, allow me to talk as much about Mike Pence as he has demonstrated relevance during this administration. I'm sorry, I forgot what I was talking about. I apologize, that never happens. Now, that is who the Republicans have asked you to throw your vote away for. But we have an opportunity not to throw our vote away. We have an opportunity to vote for someone who is going to empower us and set us free from the policies and the outcomes that the Republicans have created. Let's talk for a moment about Dr. Joe Jorgensen. Joe Jorgensen, a brilliant, self-made entrepreneur. Someone who, apparently this is a thing, we don't have to worry about whether or not she can pass a cognitive test because that's apparently a hurdle that we have to jump. It's not a high hurdle, but we will jump it with incredible gusto. <laughs> Joe Jorgensen, who has demonstrated that she is ready to lead from day one. Not by taking control of your life, but just the opposite. By giving you your power back, by giving you your control and your freedom and your money back. Remember that money they took? Giving that back to you. Giving you your life back letting you lead your lives because folks just like everyone else running just like nick just like richard just like justin just like daryl everyone else running as libertarians we recognize that people live better lives when they are free to forge their own path we recognize that someone's thousands of miles away or hundreds of miles away trying to tell you how to live your life in the best of conditions, that person could not possibly know what you need as well as you can. And in the worst of conditions, they will use it for their own corrupt purposes, which is what we have watched happen for the past several decades. We know we have to dismantle those systems. We know we have to give you your money and your power and your wealth back. That is why Joe Jorgensen and I are running. That is why Libertarians are running. That's why we ask for your vote. Folks, Joe and I, the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire, Libertarian parties around the country, we are working to build an army for human liberty, fighting for a world set free in our time, and we need your help. If you have not already, I ask you to join the Libertarian Party. You can go to lp.org and sign up to join there, or as I understand, I believe we have paperwork over there where they can join the National Party. And while you're there, you can join the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire. And if you live in another state, you can join that state too. And you can still join the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire because they'll still take you. You can join your state and local affiliates. If you don't have a local affiliate in your area, you can make one yourself and they'll help you do that. You can become a part of the growing grassroots army, doing things that I can't do. I'm not able to make phone calls to all of your friends and loved ones, which I had the time, but I, I, I can't. You can do that. I can't share all of my content on your social media. You can. I can't uh, make phone calls to all of your local call-in uh, radio shows. You can do that. I can't make letters to all of the editors. You can do that. That's what you can do at the grassroots level. You can also help us if you're able to with monetary support by helping Justin and Nick and Richard and Daryl and Andrew and everyone else running to give what you're able to. And if you're able to give, I invite you to go to joe20.com. Here we have a volunteer form that you can fill out. And if you're able to make a contribution, I would greatly appreciate it. That's what allows us to do these kinds of tours. That's what allows us to do the big bus tour that we've been doing. That's what allows us to do the video ads on streaming services and TV stations that we've been able to do and the radio uh, hits and everything else that we've been able to do. 50% of all of the money that is coming in is going directly towards video ad placement. And much of that other 50% is going to other types of advertising placement. It is your money that allows us to do this. It is your generous contributions that allow us to take the message directly to the American people. Because we've seen what, it, what happens if we rely on corporate media to give us attention. They're not going to do it because they know these six corporations that own almost all of the major media in this country know that when we get into office, their gravy train is over and they'll have to pull themselves up by their 
bootstraps and start living within their means like they tell the rest of us to do. So they'll never give us an equal footing and we don't expect them to. We have to build our own thing. We also, unlike our opponents, don't rob you. You may not know this, but the Republicans and Democrats get something called federal matching funds, which is a fancy way of saying they rob you through taxes, because as we know, all taxation is theft, and they use it to help pay for their, for their campaigns. Because not only, as they've made it clear, not only do they think that they are owed your support and your vote, they think that they're owed your money. Folks, I'll never rob you to pay for my campaign because I don't think that I'm owed your support. I don't think I'm owed your vote, and I sure as hell don't think I'm owed your money. I think that if I get your vote and your support and your donation, it's because I've earned it. And if I've earned it, if Richard has earned it, if Nick has earned it, Daryl has earned it, if Justin has earned it, then I ask you to give what you are able to. Another note on that. Trump and Biden so far have received somewhere around a quarter of a billion dollars in corporate funding. The last time I checked, the Jorgensen Cohen campaign has received exactly zero dollars and zero cents in big corporate funding for two very powerful reasons. Number one, we'd never take it. And number two, they'd never give it to us. Why? Because they know, again, once we are in office, it's all over. If they want to get rich, they'll have to provide value. They'll have to actually do something that you want instead of going to their buddies at the federal trough and just sucking up money knowing that you have to pay for it for the next 40 plus years you, your children and their children with interest. These are the stakes that we have right now. And so I ask you for your support, for your vote, for whatever contribution you're able to make, and more importantly than that, I ask you to share the message of liberty as far and wide as you can with your friends, your loved ones, your colleagues, neighbors, anyone that you are possibly able to share the cheerful message of maximizing your liberty. And so folks, I thank you for your time. I open the floor up to Q&A, but I just want to end by saying that I appreciate your time. 